All right, NG8 on the porch. We're in the upper 40s, low 50s. We're getting this rain off uh, that hurricane coming up from the southeast. But we have a northwest wind. It's not exactly comfortable. And I just don't feel like getting out on the bike today. Because then I gotta I gotta regroup all my uh, riding gear, put all my liners in, and it's gonna warm up by Saturday. Today's uh Tuesday. But today I wanted to talk about um, if you've been following it. This thing that we got going on with China over in the Spratly Islands, which aren't really islands, uh, I'm going to get to that. Um, a few topics, and I'm going to put a link in the box so you can go to this article, and then you can click on each one of these, uh, what I'm going to mention here. Um, you can click on it, and you can go to the actual document that spells it out. The first one is the United Nations, uh, son of a bitch, UNCLOS. Hang on, I gotta go look that up again. I've got it saved on the page. I'll be right back. All right, sorry about that. UN Convention, Law of the Seas. Now there you will find the definition of an island. Okay. The article I'm going to give you is LTE, which is uh, low tide elevation. Now, basically, what that means is if you have a if you have a an island quote or a coral reef, if at low tide any of that is exposed, it don't count because at high tide, it's totally underwater. So that does not count as a piece of land. And no, China can't just go out there and add a bunch of sand and make it high tide proof. It doesn't work that way. That's not the way this convention was written up. Which, by the way, China is a signatory. I thought you'd want to hear it from me because I do have some experience with this, especially with oil rigs. And let me just cover that right quick so I can put this away. Oil rigs, they have a, they have, they have a standoff zone between 500 meters and a quarter mile. If you're out in the ocean, you can't just take your little fishing boat and go up and tie up to, a, to an oil rig. You don't have that right. They have the right to say, get away, get away. But what you can do is contact the oil rig on channel 16 of the uh, Maritime Radio. I think that's what it's called. It's been a long time. And if they give you permission to come in and tie up to one of their standoffs, then you can do that. But simply put, you can't just go and tie up to that. So we send the Arleigh Burke destroyer, uh, the USS Larson, DDG-82, into this environment 
or they're going to close within what China claims is a 12 mile limit of these artificial islands. Illegal. Illegal. So we did that this morning or late last night. What did China do? Oh, well, they put what I consider a Coast Guard cutter behind our Navy ship and followed it around. And the Navy ship just did a, just did a, just did a, a, a drive-by. Didn't do anything. Didn't collect any intelligence. Yeah, right. But that's kind of how that shit works. Law of the sea and uh, free maritime passage. Okay, the other thing that China's trying to do with these islands is they're making these islands and then they're trying to extend their realm where nobody can get around it. So that's going to hammer Vietnam. Oh man, there's a bunch of them. Vietnam, Japan, Korea, uh, Philippines. Um, I think there's like nine other countries that are they're all claiming dispute over these fucking reefs. So, this whole bullshit with China and all you naysayers and doom and gloomers that think this is going to going to be the start of World War III and it's going to start with China and the United States. It's pure bullshit. Because the UN already has it in the thing and China signed it. They can't do this shit. They can do it. But what good it's going to do them, I don't know, because they're going to lose in the world court. All it's going to take is somebody to take them to court over it. take it to the UN, not that the UN has any balls, and not that the UN will do a goddamn thing about anything, but it's all, it's all bullshit, it's all hyperbole. Let China build that shit up, and the first time a super hurricane or typhoon, typhoon over there, first time a typhoon goes in over there, they can lay all the concrete they want on top of that sand. Typhoon will wipe that sand base out on top of them coral, coral reefs that they're piling it on. And they're going to go away. The artificial island will disappear the first time a typhoon hits it. I've been in hurricanes, I've been in typhoons, and I tell you, there's not much of a worse weather system that you can run into on the open ocean. So that's my take. I just thought you might want to hear uh, the real facts behind World War III is fixing to start. It ain't gonna happen, guys. China's just blustering again. They're spending all that money pumping all that sand up on top of on top of coral reefs and the first typhoon will eliminate it. Mark my words. That's gonna happen. Oh, and the other thing, USS Larson went and did that <coughs> last night and this morning. But none of these uh, network news are smart enough to realize that we were in joint ops with Korea. We had an aircraft carrier. We had an entire... We had an entire battle fleet over by Korea, which included an aircraft carrier. So, even though they're building runways on those artificial islands, they don't have anything near yet. Their little Coast Guard ships aren't going to stop anything. They want to start something. 
we will stomp a mud hole in their ass and then they can pile sand on top of their ships until they make another island. Sorry guys, I just flip out when I start seeing, oh, World War III is going to start over China and the Spratly Islands. Bullshit, it's not going to happen. So well, I'm MG8, I'm on the porch, and uh, fuck, it started raining again. We'll talk to you later.